Hi, I'm Gary White for Central Kentucky Television. I'm here with Washington County Judge Executive John Settles for an update on a fiscal court meeting that was held on Wednesday, August the 14th. There's actually only one fiscal court meeting that's going to be held in August this month, or this year, right? There's only one in August this month, <laughs> one there this year. There were some uh, pretty severe uh, scheduling conflicts on the regular meetings, and uh, so at our last meeting, uh, we changed the meeting date to Wednesday the 14th. It normally should have been on the 12th, and then again, I think on the 26th toward the end, or 23rd, I think toward the end of the month. But we, so we just had one meeting today, or this month, and uh, it ended up being fairly long. Yes, I bet. Well, one uh, major issue that was discussed as well and had gotten a lot of uh, people interested was the bluegrass pipeline. And we've been covering that for a little while in Nelson County in Bardstown, this proposed pipeline going through there, and also talking about it in Marion County and also now in Washington County as well. And there was actually a resolution that the county passed regarding the Bluegrass Pipeline. Is that correct? That's correct. That was the, uh, the main topic and, and the topic that did draw so many people. I would estimate there were 45 to 50 people there, which is a huge crowd for our court meeting. Uh, we normally have staff and sometimes one or two uh, citizens that are there. Uh, it's always good to have citizens. Uh, I think they help, it helps them by learning the democratic process. And it helps us because we learn about the issues that they want to bring before court. Uh, they were informed, the group was con informed prior to the meeting that uh, this is a regular court meeting. Therefore, it's not a public hearing. And so uh, only allowed a couple of their representatives to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, they did an excellent job and presented their side of the, of the issue very well. Uh, asked for anyone that was uh, supporting the pipeline or any company officials. There were no one present. Uh, so those that the spoke were, were against the pipeline, of course, mm -hmm. uh, and, and we did pass a resolution. It is modeled very similarly to uh, the one that passed in Franklin County mm -hmm. uh, and also the one in Marion County. They are very similar. So uh, the wording, uh, just a, a very few changes in the wording of, of what Washington County passed uh, that Marion County had done a, a few weeks prior. Okay, and it was passed unanimously by yes, uh, yes. Uh, the, it was brought up at the last court meeting, the last meeting in uh, July, uh, and very little information was known at that time. Uh, I had done a little bit of research on the internet, had gone to one meeting at that time, uh, but was just not versed on it uh, at all to be able to discuss it. Since that time, I've attended a couple other meetings. I've been I'm doing a lot more research. Uh, one of the meetings, there were a lot of handouts from the company, from the Williams company. Uh, and I've read all that, and, uh, so hopefully I've, I've read both pros and cons. Right. I know it's a very emotional issue, uh, but it also involves uh, some land rights issues, and, uh, but of particular importance to myself and the magistrates was the, uh, the whole idea of eminent domain and whether or not uh, this company or any company, private company, can use eminent domain to force their way through somebody's property. Mm -hmm. and force a property owner, owner to allow them to bury their pipeline under their, the, the property owner's property without their consent. And I think that's still kind of up in the air. There, there are people very much on uh, extreme opposite ends of that spectrum. Some people say that it, it can be. Other people say that Kentucky law is stringent enough that it cannot be. Uh, but not knowing for sure, and I think the only way it'll ever be known for sure is if it goes to a court of law and that is decided right. uh, but not knowing for sure we wanted to take a stance uh, on that on not uh, people being forced on our property owners in Washington County being forced to have eminent no domain invoked in the use of, of installing this pipeline and we also felt that there had just not been enough uh, research on uh, the, number one the necessity of the pipeline on uh, where it should be located considering all the geographical, archaeological, historical, public safety uh, topics that need to be addressed prior to uh, siting or, or locating this pipeline. Okay. And the resolution, as you said, was passed unanimously, basically saying that the court is opposed to the pipeline going through Washington County. But it, that's, in general, what it says, but I think more specifically it addresses eminent domain and, and mm -hmm. lack of uh, sufficient study, uh, but it, it does express in there that the court at this time uh, is opposed to it. I mean, if there's more information, 
um, better information, uh, then it's not like that we wouldn't reconsider. And keep in mind that a resolution is not an act of law by a local government. Right. It is just a resolve that, that we, are, at this point, are against it. So it's uh, not a, an ordinance. Right. So if somebody is approached by the Williams Company for a potential siting for the pipeline, it is still completely their option whether they choose to do anything or not. Absolutely. And that was one of the things that uh, the magistrates had addressed me prior to the court meeting uh, was about individual property rights, that uh, they were not at this point prepared uh, to tell an individual property owner in Washington County that uh, you cannot talk to or consider uh, receiving payment for allowing the company to come across your land. So uh, that's why it's a resolution, not an ordinance. Uh, it's not binding by law, but it does show support uh, and support by the uh, governing body of this county that at this time we are against the locating of a natural gas liquids pipeline. Now, a pipeline of another sort may be a different matter because uh, this, what it will be carry carrying is uh, inherently dangerous and uh, the hydrocarbons or mixture of hydrocarbons that will be carrying uh, have potential to be very dangerous and um, there's just a lot of unknowns. Okay. Now also, there's been a lot, there's a lot of construction going on throughout Washington County that we want to touch upon as well. And I know a few years back we were talking about the bypass that was done. Well, there's some work being done on a portion of that bypass, right? And Correct. also further down on 150 in the Fredericksburg area. Well, the, as you are, you're correct, the bypass was completed just a couple of years ago. Uh, now, with the uh, construction of the new high school, uh, the bypass is having some adjustments made. Uh, as we speak, uh, turning lanes are being built uh, to facilitate traffic going into and out of uh, where the new high school is located on the new section of 150, that is what we call the Springfield Bypass. Uh, so that is going to greatly increase the safety in that area. Uh, even though the school is not completed and they're not using that building this year, uh, the turning lanes will be uh, constructed and will be able to be used when the high school is, is uh, being used in the fall of 2014. Also, on the eastern end, um, I understand that part of Highway 150 is going to receive resurfacing from the Boyle County line uh, back to uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of East Texas. So uh, that section had gotten rough. But then the section you're referring to, is a, a short section on, on the western part of uh, the county uh, that adjoins Nelson County where the new, two new bridges have been constructed, uh, replacing the old and what I was told nearly unsafe. They were trying to get them replaced before they became uh, unsafe. And uh, so that traffic today is now having to go through a, a little bit of a switch, go over in other lanes of, of newly constructed uh, temporary roadway because they're digging out part of the old road bed and, and building the base up to modern standards and that will be uh, reserved. The bridges are complete uh, but the road beds are what's under construction now. Uh, that The deadline or the that this road, the bridges, all that's to be complete is uh, December. Uh, it looks to me that they may be ahead of schedule uh, but they do have to December to get that completed and opened up. Okay. So there'll be construction along there for a little while more to yeah, come potentially. Several sections of 150 through Washington County, yes. Okay. Now also on the agenda were discussion of some potential, uh, the tax rates for 2013, which always uh, interests people as well for the tax rates for real estate and tangible property as well as for motor vehicles and watercraft. Correct. And can you tell us how that discussion Well, let's discuss uh, motor vehicle and watercraft. Uh, Washington County has traditionally uh, realized not a lot of income from that, and it stayed at eight cents per one hundred dollars of assessment now for many, many years. And so we did not change that. So the eight cents per hundred dollar of assessment on watercraft and motor vehicles will remain the same. The other uh, personal property, uh, mm -hmm. real pro excuse me, real property, uh, that was up for major discussion because it, that uh, could impact the amount of money coming into the county for years to come because whatever if there was an increase that would be compact simple compound uh, over every year from there for uh, from now on uh, the court our compensating rate which means that we would receive uh, the same amount of money that we received last year uh, would was 7.6 cents per hundred dollars of assessment 
uh, the allowable 4% increase, 4% uh, of the 7.6 would have been 7.9. The county could have realized a little over $14,000 increase in income if we had taken the allowable 4%. And what I mean by allowable, if you take over the 4%, then it has to go to a referendum, to a vote of the people. 4% uh, or less, um, you have to have a public hearing on it, um, but it does not have to go to a, a vote. The, if you take the compensating rate, which is the rate, as I stated, that generates the same funds as what was generated year before, then you do not have to have a public hearing, a vote, or it's just a, a, a first and second reading. So we had the first reading today of taking the compensating rate. Um, last year's budget cycle was extremely difficult. Uh, our, our income versus expenses uh, has gotten much, much tighter. There were some programs we could not fund last year, and I urged uh, the magistrates this time to at least consider taking uh, the 4% and what it would mean down the road. Uh, but after some discussion, they decided that did not want to take uh, the adjusted rate, so there was a motion made to, to take the compensating rate, which means that it will stay at 76 cents per $100 of assessment. Uh, so we had to, to deal with that and we'll move forward. It may mean some uh, significant cuts. Um, nothing's getting cheaper. Our fuel cost, our labor cost, our insurance cost. Uh, so I foresee in the, in the coming years, if something's not done, that there's going to be signif significant cuts in services that are offered to our constituents uh, through cuts in uh, programs and personnel. Okay. Now, also some requests were made from, you had a request from the City of Springfield as well as for Fredericktown Park, and you wanted to tell us a little about those requests? Well, there were uh, two uh, notices from the City of Springfield. Uh, first one I'll address is there was a notice of a zoning change for some property that adjoins our road department. Uh, it was the building where the uh, mainly handicapped workshop used to be, and uh, that was zoned residential one, R1. Uh, and they're, re they're requesting a change of zoning to highway commercial, which would allow it to be used for a business. And since we are an adjoining property owner, then we received that request, and, and uh, because I was going to represent the court at the zoning hearing, uh, and the court really had no uh, input, uh, they feel like it might uh, enhance the sale of the property if it is zoned highway commercial. So I will be attending that meeting and, and uh, explaining that. The other request was from uh, the city, of, city council budget committee uh, made up of three people for uh, explaining the cost of uh, Idlewire Park uh, and asking for some help in funding that uh, from Washington Fiscal Court. As I just stated and, and you brought up about uh, our budget and, and taxes, uh, we are, are financially strapped as we are. We have, the county owns one park which is at Fredericktown. Uh, the last few months we had to tear out the major piece of playground equipment because it had become unsafe. And uh, our insurance carrier suggested we remove it. We've not been able to replace that. So we're having trouble maintaining the, on the only park that we own. And at this point we just don't feel like uh, that we can afford it. We have the money to be able to uh, uh, help the city of Springfield with, uh, with the park. There were a couple other discussions that came into that. Uh, as far as some statutory requirements that the county has that the city is not responsible for, and uh, one of those being the housing and, and uh, care of inmates, that uh, no matter where the inmates come from, whether they come from the city of Springfield or, or out in the county, that it's the county's responsibility to uh, house and pay for the housing and treatment and care of those inmates. Uh, and then the ambulance service is operated strictly by the county, uh, and that is subsidized heavily by the by physical court uh, in some other counties that is uh, a partnership between city and county okay. so at this at this point uh, we number one simply don't have the money and uh, number two there may be some questions about other uh, other funding okay now also since they're only having one meeting this month <coughs> and usually there are two you had all the reports done in within this one month so there are a lot of different reports, all the different areas that were touched upon, solid waste, road planning, uh, jail, EMS, Office of Emergency Management, all the different ones. Uh, were there some updates that we need to? Well, uh, probably one <coughs> significant uh, 
uh, in, in uh, solid waste that involves an employee. Um, Brad Langford was hired uh, six months ago as our new solid waste in, employee, a director actually, a uh, long time serving uh, head of that department, George Ann Palmer had, re had retired mm -hmm. and uh, Brad had been chosen to fill that position and uh, so today was his six month review, uh, which means that I as his direct supervisor would give I had to give a report to court and, and either recommend for him to be uh, brought on full time or to uh, uh, maybe keep him on his part or as temporary full time a while longer. Uh, but I, I feel like Brad has done an excellent job. He's uh, uh, carried on many of the programs that George Ann started. Uh, he's done a good job of managing people and commodities and, um, and so I recommend that he be made full time and having said that, uh, as we normally do, uh, even though he's salaried, I recommended he be uh, his uh, salary be raised 50 cent an hour equivalent. So uh, it, that will uh, hopefully motivate him to continue the good work that he's already been doing. Great. And the others were uh, were pretty much the other department heads were pretty much uh, uh, routine. There's a report by the emergency management director that. Uh, because there's been some question about what's happening at the state level. Mm -hmm. Was there any effect on uh, the county level? Uh, basically n none. I mean, we do work with the state and, and we do work with those that that run the state emergency management, but at this point nothing has changed and and it didn't involve the county what uh, transpired at the state and state level and so therefore um, just assuring the magistrates that, that everything is, is running as smoothly as possible. But I think uh, mostly that's uh, that's probably it for all the, the everything was just pretty mm -hmm. mundane, pretty <laughs> regular report. Now you also had your cumulative report for the fiscal year 2012-2013, <coughs> which was uh, presented as well. Uh, that's a basically a wrap up. Mm -hmm. uh, by this time of the year, the county treasurer has gotten all bills, paid all bills, uh, knows all the salaries, uh, and, and breaks that down in a in a pretty thick report of of every penny that was spent in Washington County, where that went to, whether it went to salaries, whether uh, it went to supplies or fuel, and the, the cumulative report is just a, a very in-depth uh, breakdown of, of the money, the expenses, where the money went, and uh, so we encourage the managers to look over those in-depth and uh, question anything. Right. I use it uh, extensively to try to look at areas that may be somewhat out of skew. Uh, you know, why did we spend that much? Are, are we having uh, maybe some maintenance issues that, that we're having equipment breakdowns? Uh, look at, it, it points out uh, maybe we're having too much overtime in certain areas and, and we need to, to start making adjustments there. So uh, I think it's a very valuable document and, and I use it in planning financial, making financial decisions. Great. Well, that was kind of a review of the Washington County Fiscal Court agenda for the meeting that occurred on Wednesday, August the 14th. I've been talking with Washington County Judge Executive John Settles. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Right. It's been Gary White for Central Kentucky Television.